Wow. Take a look at what's been going on in real estate right now and you can almost feel the heat. We are itching for more current statistics. We've been doing market updates regularly and looking from neighborhood to neighborhood, it's super hot, but right now we're gonna decode the market statistics from the Realtors Association of Edmonton. They just released their January statistics and we read them honestly, so you don't have to. Uh, it's not great information to read through. It's percentages and it needs a lot of unpacking. Uh, when you talk about average price, is that what the average house is worth? Or is that relative to market demand? These are the things that we want to let you in to the inside of. So we call this real estate insight instead of just information. And I want to bring the entire hacking company team in because they are exceptional. You can find them at the very top of rankmyagent.com. Uh, we have everybody here this morning and we're excited to have you guys all into the conversation. So uh, welcome, welcome. Uh, Amy Brown, good to see you. <clears throat> It's been pretty interesting taking a look at where you normally hang out in the West End, Edmonton. Absolutely. And further west from there, Kim, these bedroom communities just keep starting, uh, just keep heating up, hey? Yes, very exciting. Uh, Anthony, you were just awarded with Rank My Agents Best in St. Albert Award. Well done. Uh, that's exceptional. Uh, St. Albert, is there any houses to be bought there? There's a couple. <laughs> Got to be fast, eh? Mm -hmm. And uh, Erida, um, you have been burning your way through the Northeast, but all over uh, in the last uh, few months there. And uh, you've also had a listing, a great response in Sherwood Park. Um, good to see you this morning. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. That's awesome. Well, when we take a look at the wide spectrum of what happened in our marketplace uh, in the last month, I think that we really have to take a look at that relationship between supply and demand. That's what everybody always asks us, right? Like the most common question that we would get is, is it a buyer's market or a seller's market? So Kim, what do you think? Buyer's market or seller's market? Uh, well, the month of January was a balanced market, but it feels crazy um compared to last year it was we are right now we're sitting at 3.5 months of inventory um but last year we were at 4.7 so such a big difference from last year and you can feel it when you're out with your buyers and when you have your listings you can sure feel the difference from last year to this year yeah, it's incredible. We saw some statistics over the last couple of months where like there was some some types of properties that were just going wild uh, with the number of properties that had sold versus the number of properties that were coming to the market. And so what you're saying is, is that the the feeling that you are getting is shortage? Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's the inventory and like when you're with buyers, it's booking your appointments, they're all pending or you have to be real quick on those, you know, day zero ones for those good homes out there because they are leaving fast. Okay, wait a second. So you guys are all experiencing this right now? How many people have buyers that they're looking for inventory for right now? Everybody. Everybody's looking for inventory. What do you guys need to find? Uh, uh, er uh, Erida, what are you after? I am after a two-story duplex or detached home for about 425 in South Fork or Meadowview Park, like in Leduc. Oh, wow. So you're out in those bedroom communities and uh, you're saying that they're like those duplexes, they've been hot all year. Hey, who else is looking for duplexes? Wow. We got three teammates right now looking for duplexes. What are you after there, Tony? Uh, 425 in Chappelle or DeRoche. Um, and a big bonus if it has a double attached garage and a bonus room upstairs. And Kim, what are you chasing? I am looking on the north side of Edmonton. So really in those newer areas like Rappersville. Um, same thing, to a two story around that 400,000 mark, two story um, with a double attached garage, newer. Oh, that's fantastic. And Amy, you're not looking for a duplex. What are you chasing? I am looking in Windermere and Keswick. I'm looking for homes up to 800 with double car attached garages and homes up to 1.5 million with at least five bedrooms. There's a lot of those people at 1.5 million that didn't sell last year, right? I agree. Yeah, we were looking through expireds and we're hoping that there's some uh, people that are going to try again, right? Absolutely. 
Yeah, some great in inventory was looked over last year. I don't think it's going to be looked over this year after we set records last year in the luxury market, like twice as many units as what we had uh, seen previously when you take a look at like the last five years. So I hope you get your wish this year when it comes to some of this stuff coming to the market. Really interesting to see what we're chasing. And that's because it's leaning into that uh, seller's advantage. When you have this many buyers that are looking for things, when something hits the market, do you think that sellers are nervous about getting an offer? I think that they are if they're working with old information. Like, could you imagine working with somebody right now that doesn't do this? That doesn't unpack the Realtors Association of Edmonton uh, market statistics and understand that like 11 out, of uh, 11 out of 10 duplexes sold in December? Like, you might not have that information. Imagine if you were using yesterday's playbook in today's market. How much money would you give up? That'd be nasty. So when we take a look at this, it's starting to show up in a couple of places. Um, how long does it take to sell a house right now? Uh, Amy, what's the general consensus for days on market? The average year over year has gone down eight days, which is fabulous. We are seeing that even better when we're looking at duplexes, which are down 18 days. I think the overall numbers are somewhat skewed for the total because condominiums are still stuck at 73 and single family attached is right on par with all residential at eight days down. That's fantastic. Is there anything that uh, seems to be bucking the trend? I would say that duplexes and row houses are absolutely bucking the trend being down as much as they are. Man, this is so interesting. Now, all right, I think that, it, can I tell people that you used to advise people on betting on horses? Absolutely. <laughs> okay, so we were talking about this and like when, when you were talking about two people about betting on horses, you used to tell them to take a look at what? Um, who was riding the horse. Who was riding the horse and how much information you could get, right? Because the more information, the more of an informed decision you're going to make. Exactly. And that means that when people bet on the dark horse, they're actually betting on the horse that doesn't have very much information. Maybe the one that just has a name that they think is lucky or whatnot. And sometimes the magic moments are when the dark horse wins the race. And I think that the, I think the duplexes were the dark horse of 2021. We Great. really didn't see that coming. So when you take a look a little bit past that, like Kim, you've been doing real estate a few years now. And when you take a look at people that maybe tried to bring their duplex to the market in 2018, how would they have felt about the reception back then? Um, not, not like nervous, kind of. Yeah, they wouldn't feel like a duplex owner now, right? No, if you were a duplex a owner right now coming to the marketplace, you should be excited. It's time to go upgrade. And some of those people that felt equity locked a couple of years ago, like, man, the market has set you free. Because really, the market only needs to move up like 1% or 2% before people start to get a lot more options. Like, look how much money they have in there. So it's really interesting to see how that's shaping up. What do you expect coming forward with Days on Market? I expect them to keep going down more and more and more. What did we see last year in the summer, Tony? Do you remember? I think we we're in like the high 30s or low uh, 40 days on market. And the good stuff was gone on opening weekend. And we kept seeing these like over asking list prices. And I think that that's going to show up in average price. Erida, you were taking a look at average price. What are your thoughts? Um, so year over year for the average price, everything is on the rise. So everything's positive. You will notice some things are trending down within the past couple months. Um, but what's interesting, and I know we talked a little bit about this, but duplexes have gained the most value since 2021. Wow, that's like a really good news for everybody your age, right? Like if they got into real estate, even though that real estate wasn't necessarily performing, all of a sudden it is performing. And those people really have to feel like somebody in their family just got a job. Right? Like the way that money is coming into their household, that's just got to be awesome. And we want those folks to win. Uh, that's where those people start families and they move up from there and really dig into their community. So I think that that's great news. Now, what's bucking the trend when it comes to average price? Does everything seem to be moving in the same direction? Well, it does look like single family homes in the last couple months are trending down. Um, condos are trending up from last month. And then, like I said, duplexes are all trending up since last year, last few months and so on. 
Okay, so this is something that I think that uh, as a team, we would say, I don't know about that, right? Do you think that houses are worth less than they were two months ago? I don't either. And so what we're seeing here in the statistics is probably a little bit more about appetite. The people that are operating in the winter are outside of what the norm is. Like when we see the spring, it's normally families with kids upgrading. That's the most common transaction in the market. However, when we see over the winter, it's like utility real estate, downsizers. We're going to see a lot of like job transfers, different movement in the marketplace. And that could actually explain average price, because if you're thinking that uh, you would take a lower list price than you would a couple of months ago, you might want to get better advice. <clears throat> so I think that that's great. Thanks for helping us unpack that, uh, Erda. And uh, next, I really wanted to talk a little bit about these properties coming to the market and what their likelihood is. Because in my real estate career, there's been times when we've been telling people that they have a one out of two shot. And what they should know right now is really for all the properties that are entering the market in January versus the properties that left the market, we call this sales to listing ratio. And like six out of 10 is what sold, right? Whereas when we take a look and decode that further, we can say that that was actually heavily affected by the condo market being a poor performer. Like really, it's I don't think I've ever seen it this challenging for condos. And what I'm telling you is, is that if you are shopping for condos, there are deals to be had, all right? Uh, and those, the reason is, is there's only four out of 10 of them that are, so, uh, that are selling. That's what the sales to new listing ratio is. And with single family detached, it's twice the likelihood. You're eight out of 10. And duplex and row houses, over the last month, I was surprised to see that we only had seven out of 10 of them selling. Cause like in December, it was 10 out of 10. And in November, 11 out of 10 of them were selling. Like we were losing inventory in duplexes. There were more being bought than actually sold or actually listed. So really, I think that we're going to start to see this take a big jump. So this month, January, was very low statistically for the sales to new listing ratio. They're saying 62%. But in the months previously, we were at 93% and 86%. So pretty much 8 out of 9 or 9 out of 9 both months. And here we are at 6 out or sorry, <laughs> uh, 9 out of 10 both months. And here we are performing at 6 out of 10. I think that this is probably just part of a lull. So uh, everybody is yanking uh, together for the spring and we're inviting people in because the water's warm. But when you're talking about what's hot and what's not, what do you think, Tony? Oh man, the hottest stuff right now are those like entry level homes. So we've seen like Taylor mentioned the duplexes, you know, if 10 are hitting the market, 11 are leaving the market. We're seeing that pretty much all over the city and bedroom communities too. But uh, entry level homes that are moving ready, you know, most buyers right now are looking to get the most amount of home for their pre approval. And so they don't really have much uh, money left over to make cosmetic changes, or they're not worried about, you know, replacing the furnace anytime soon. And so that's the stuff that's super hot. And then for cold, what we're seeing that's like icy cold, the stuff that's been sitting around on the market for a while, that stuff usually has like tons of oak and original, you know, mechanical systems and a roof that looks like it's fallen apart. There's uh, a lot of uninformed sellers not looking to make these changes. And so if we could, over, you know, if we could advise anybody that's thinking about selling, like do what you can to make your house stand out. Um, if you have a duplex, just <laughs> here it is right? As long as it's ready to go. But uh, every other property type seems to be, you know, needing to be a 10 out of 10. So think about what uh, concerns might be for buyers, even though you might feel comfortable with the mechanical systems. It's really hard for that uh, first time home buyer to trust it because everybody now wants new, new shiny things. Uh, that's interesting. So uh, everybody, so do we have some agreement with Tony? Uh, Tony's thinking of some of the hottest things out there are those uh, those um, lower priced entry level single family detached dwellings, right? And that probably explains it because those compete directly with duplexes. Now I'm going to speculate and say that the reason that there's such high demand for that is because those buyers are really nervous. They just found out their interest rates went up. They're hearing things that these properties are being snapped up. So every month they're going to be setting more ambitious list prices. 
So I can understand why they're feeling pressure to come to the market. And I think that that pressure is a good thing because those, those buyers that actually seize property before the market opens, like uh, into like full blast spring, are going to pay lower prices for this property. And also they're very likely going to get lower interest rates. But I think interest rates is going to be the big story of the spring. Um, who's heard any interest rates uh, interest rate announcements lately? Anybody hear anything? I did hear that uh, most people were expecting them to rise and they didn't, um, but very unlikely that that happens again. So we're looking at probably uh, March to see announcements of it moving up and probably steady inc increases from there. So you're talking about Fed rate. So uh, the Canadian uh, like lending prime rate or whatnot, the government met and decided not to raise that. And that normally is going to play a biggest effect with things like variable rates. But we're consistently hearing rates rise on the uh, fixed side. So like uh, I know that there was a deadline a few weeks ago and I was talking to some of our trusted experts on our mortgage list and they were letting us know that their clients were rushing to hit deadlines because if they missed them, it was a full percent increase. So these are the things that I think those those buyers are looking at. Way more likely that they're going to be uh, looking at um, uh, like fixed terms, just given how the government loans work. We definitely suggest that you take this information to one of our trusted experts that's an expert in mortgages. We just wanted to raise the flag and let you know that the market landscape is based on financing. Your ability to buy, your buying power, in almost every case in Edmonton is uh, dictated by your pre-approval. So get great pre-approvals and get those pre-approvals now so you can lock in your rates, right? Is there anything else you guys want to make sure that uh, people thinking about the spring market uh, want to know or uh, should know? It's the spring has sprung. There's a ton oh, of yeah. Some people right think it's the date, right? When do you think that spring starts? A uh, couple weeks ago. <laughs> okay. And why is that? Because we look at the spring as like usually like statistically being like the busiest time in real estate, but it's super um, busy right now. There's a ton of demand. There's a ton of buyers that are like sitting on their hands right now because they're not finding the property that fits them just yet. So we would say that the spring market is here. I would totally agree. Uh, anything else you think that they should know? Uh, don't do this prepared. alone. Yeah. <laughs> If prepared. you're working without an agent, you're going to be missing the good stuff. You just cannot get there quick enough using the public tools. Yeah, Kim, you've been glued to Zoom helping people prepare. What do they need to know to prepare? Um, you just need to be be ready. Get those, you know, those get out there as soon as you, the property that you see um, come up. You need to be. You have I have my lunch hours open for my buyers if they they call and that property shows up, I'll be there for them because that's how fast they will go. Yeah, because you're getting people set up on the Pro Tools. So a lot of people don't know that uh, when they look at the major websites that they go to, they're great websites. In fact, as Remax Realtors, we're involved with a couple of the big ones. But that's not where you win. You win in something that most people don't know about called Paragon, the Pro Tools of Real Estate, where you find out the instant that other realtors find out. Because frankly, if out there you were trying to shop for the uh, same property as Kim is representing clients to, we would have found it and passed on it or bought it before you even knew it It was there. Like the, to the, uh, it's unfortunate, but almost in every situation when you're talking about the pros, they're going to outperform the amateurs. That's just how it is. We've done this before. We've won before. We know how to win. Uh, and that's something that like Erida, we were talking like, <laughs> I've never seen somebody so choked about missing in multiple offers. You just expect to win now? <laughs> I think that we were all surprised because uh, you crushed it on that one. But uh, that's what type of records that we have around here is uh, even uh, agents that um, some people might look past, like young agents. Uh, they're killers and they expect to win here too. It's actually pretty rare when they don't. So... <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us for Market uh, in, uh, Insight. We wanted to turn these stats into stories and save you from real uh, having to read the Realtors Association of Edmonton Market uh, Package. Uh, we did it and we made it through, but not 
everybody. We had like three other teammates. I'm just kidding. Um, so look for us in the marketplace. You can easily get in touch with us at our fast agent hotline. Call 780-909-6770. And what you're gonna do is be connected to one of the highest rated and reviewed real estate teammates in the city. We have a dedicated plan. We've guided people through the market on the buyers and seller side. We understand what you guys need. We understand that sellers right now, they wanna sell in a reasonable amount of time, but they're mostly trying to solve sell into purchase in a market where there is a lot to buy. We do that all the time. How many families last year did we help to purchase in the sale and line them up just right? This is some of the things that we take uh, uh, into consideration because we're after the highest ratings and reviews in the greater Edmonton area, and that's where we are right now. You're going to see regular verified review awards going to our teammates, and that's because their clients support them. And you can read more on how our clients feel about us on rankmyagent.com. My name is Taylor, and I'm here with the other award-winning teammates at Hacking Company, and uh, we appreciate you guys and hope that you have a remarkable day. Cheers.